Hello everyone, welcome to 10 Minute Physiology. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about the physical changes that occur in the lungs during breathing. So with that, let's give it a go. So I'd like to start off with the transpulmonary pressure equation. So the transpulmonary pressure is going to be equal to the difference of between the alveolar pressure and the intrapleural pressure. And what we can do is we can solve for the intrapleural pressure by rearranging this equation. And when we do that, we can identify two properties of the lung. So the first is going to be the transpulmonary pressure. And the transpulmonary pressure is going to be the static properties of the lung. The next one is going to be the alveolar pressure, and this is going to be the dynamic properties of the lung. So the static properties of the lung are going to determine lung volume, whereas the dynamic properties of the lung are going to govern airflow, so where air is going to go. So let's take a look and see how these pressures play out into these specific properties. So let's start off with the dynamic component, the alveolar pressure. And what we're going to do is we're going to graph the relationship between the flow, the flow of air, and the alveolar pressure. And we're going to assume that the barometric pressure is zero. And when we do that, we get a curve like this. So this line here is going to show us a few things. But before we get to that, let's take a look at what equation is going to describe this curve. And in order to do that, we have to bring in Ohm's law of hemodynamics. And Ohm's law of hemodynamics states that the difference of pressure is equal to the flow times the resistance. And when you solve for the flow, you get this equation. So it's this equation that is basically going to describe this relationship here. And what we see here is that the slope of this line is going to be 1 over the resistance. So from this line, we see a few things. So the first thing is that the flow is going to be 0 when the alveolar pressure is 0. And the reason why is because the barometric pressure is 0. So when the alveolar pressure is equal to the barometric pressure, there is no net airflow into or out of the lung. And this is because there's no difference in pressure, as we can predict with this equation here. Because if the alveolar pressure is equal to the barometric pressure, the difference in pressure is equal to zero, so therefore the flow is zero. But there, if the alveolar pressure is positive or greater than zero, what we see is that the flow is positive. And this means that air is going to flow out of the lung. And the reason why is because if the pressure inside the alveoli is greater than the pressure in the atmosphere, air will flow from the alveoli into the environment. And the opposite is true when the alveolar pressure is negative. When the alveolar pressure is negative, flow is negative and air will flow into the lung. So that is the most important points here that you have to get from this graph. So now what we're going to do is we're going to see how these different variables, both static and dynamic, change during the course of breathing. So let's take a look at the alveolar pressure during the course of breathing. And what we see is something like this. So the first curve, or the negative curve, is going to be the inhalation curve. And remember, this is because during inhalation, the alveolar pressure is going to be negative. And the next curve is positive, and this is going to occur during exhalation. So we have a negative alveolar pressure during inhalation, and a positive alveolar pressure during exhalation. And this is going to determine the airflow. So if you were to graph the airflow, what you would get is something like this. So during inhalation, because the alveolar pressure is negative, this means that the pressure inside the alveoli is less than the pressure in the atmosphere. Therefore, air will flow into the alveoli during inhalation, and therefore the flow is negative. And the opposite is true during exhalation. During exhalation, the alveolar pressure is positive and greater than zero. This means that the pressure inside the alveoli is greater than the pressure of the atmosphere. And this means that air will flow out of the alveoli into the atmosphere. And therefore, flow is positive. So what we see here, it's the alveolar pressure that is going to determine the air flow. Now, what about the volume? So the volume of the lung would also change over the course of breathing. And what we see here is that the volume starts around here. And when the person inhales, the volume increases. And then when they exhale, it decreases. 
Now, the last thing I want to look at is the transpulmonary pressure and the intrapleural pressure and see how they change over the course of breathing. And in order to do that, we're going to bring in our equation. So right here, we are solving for the intrapleural pressure. And what we're going to do is we're going to rearrange this equation to solve for the negative of the transpulmonary pressure, which we get here. And the reason why we're using this equation is because if the alveolar pressure is zero, this means that the negative of the transpulmonary pressure will be equal to the intrapleural pressure. Now let's see how the intrapleural pressure and transpulmonary pressure change over the course of a breathing. And when we do that, what we're going to do is we're going to graph on the y-axis the negative of the transpulmonary pressure. And the first thing that we're going to look at is actually the change in the intrapleural pressure. And what we see here with this blue curve is the change of the intrapleural crash pressure over the course of the breathing. And what we see here is that the intrapleural pressure starts around here. And when the person inhales, the intrapleural pressure becomes more negative. And it does so at a really fast rate. So the intrapleural pressure becomes more negative during inhalation. And then during exhalation, which occurs right here, the intrapleural pressure becomes more positive and it does so at a quick rate. Now what about the transpulmonary pressure, which is represented by the yellow curve? Well, the transpulmonary pressure follows a similar pattern. During inhalation, the transpulmonary pressure becomes more negative, and during exhalation, it becomes more positive. But the main difference between the changes in the intrapleural pressure and the transpulmonary pressure is going to be the rate of that change. So the intrapleural pressure, as we see here, changes at a much faster rate than the transpulmonary pressure. And the reason why is because the intrapleural pressure is going to be governed by the contraction and relaxation of the diaphragm and intercostal muscles. So the intrapleural pressure changes really rapidly, whereas the transpulmonary pressure changes at a slower rate. So what, the next thing that we have to look at is the difference between the transpulmonary and intrapleural pressure. And the difference between any two corresponding points is going to be equal to the alveolar pressure. So how does the breathing affect the airways? So what we're going to do now is we're going to see how breathing affects the airways, whether they expand or collapse. And the way we do that is by using the transmural pressure equation. So the transmural pressure equation tells you how to calculate the transmural pressure, which is the pressure difference across the wall of a vessel or airway. And the transmural pressure is equal to the airway pressure minus the intrapleural pressure. So to help visualize this, I have a little figure. So let's just say we have our airway, and inside the airway we have a pressure, and this is the pressure of the airway. And the pressure of the airway acts to expand the airway. But at the same time, we also have an opposing pressure, the intrapleural pressure, which acts to collapse. So it's the difference between the pressure in the airway and the pre intrapleural pressure that determines whether the airway is going to expand or collapse. So when the transmural pressure is positive, the airways are going to expand. When the transmural pressure is negative, the airways are going to collapse. So now what we're going to do is we're going to see how the airways are going to change during static conditions, inhalation, and exhalation. So static conditions refers to a condition in which the person is not actively breathing, but their glottis is open and their mouth is open, so therefore their alveolar pressure is going to be equal to the barometric pressure. So we're going to start off by first calculating the intrapleural pressure. And we can do that by plugging in values for the transpulmonary and alveolar pressure. Now let's just say that the transpulmonary pressure is 5 and that the alveolar pressure is 0. And remember, the reason why it's 0 is because the person is not actively breathing, so therefore the alveolar pressure is equal to the barometric pressure. And we can now solve for the intrapleural pressure. And when we do that, we get a value of negative 5. So now what we're going to do is we're going to plug in that value to the transmural pressure equation. And we're going to assume that the airway pressure is 0 because the person is not breathing. Therefore, the airways are going to have a, the pr a same pressure as the barometric pressure. And we're going to plug in our value for the intrapleural pressure. And when we do that, we get a transmural pressure of plus 5. So in static conditions, all airways are going to expand except for the trachea. 
And the reason why the trachea doesn't expand very easily is because of the amount of cartilage it has. So what about during inhalation? Well, in order to see what happens during inhalation, we're gonna bring in our transpulmonary pressure equation, and we're going to solve for the intrapleural pressure again. So we're gonna assume that our transpulmonary pressure is five, and that our alveolar pressure is negative 15. And remember, this is be, it's negative because during inhalation, the alveolar pressure is negative. And when we solve for the intrapleural pressure, we get a value of negative 20. So if we were to now solve for the transmural pressure, and assuming that the airway pressure is negative eight and plug in our value for the intrapleural pressure, we get a transmural pressure of plus 12. So since the transmural pressure is positive, this means that all airways except the trachea are going to expand during inhalation. Now what about during exhalation? During exhalation, we can do a similar thing. We solve for the intrapleural pressure, and when we do that, we get a value of plus 10. And when we solve for the transmural pressure, we get a negative value of two. So during exhalation, all airways except the trachea compress during exhalation. So the main points are that the airways expand during inhalation, compress during exhalation, and expand during static conditions. So I hope this video helped you understand some of the changes that we see inside our respiratory system during the breathing cycle. And I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you next time.